Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how the signals on L1 and L2 are produced. Notice L1 has a carrier frequency of 575 megahertz, and L2 has a carrier frequency of 1227 megahertz. We have three additional signals that are superimposed. We have what we call the CA code. CA stands for cores acquisition. This is the information that the receiver gets to get an initial idea of where we are at, and then the P code here is what we call precision code that enables the receiver then to zero that down onto a much more accurate result. So this is typically used by civilian use. The P code is typically used by military code, but we have some ways in which we can also use the information here for civilian use as well. So the, the CA code or the course acquisition code, which has a frequency of 1.023 megahertz, which is one tenth that base frequency provided by the atomic clocks. And the P code is a 10.23 megahertz, which is the exact frequency of that base frequency provided by the atomic clocks. Also, there's some navigation system data that is sent at a 50 hertz frequency, very low frequency. Notice that it's summed to both the L1 and the L2 signal so that the nav and system data goes out on both the L1 and the L2 channels. Notice that the cores acquisition code only is mixed in with the carrier frequency to be output on L1 and the precision code goes both to L1 and L2 and it gets mixed that way. Notice the technique that they add, that they use here for the addition. When we add the code, it's called the modulo 2 summation. And what that means is, with the modulo 2, when the sum of the signals is odd, then that means we put in a 1, and when the sum of the signals is even, then we put in a 0. So they either cancel each other out, or the addition is that we have a 1 or 0. In other words, the bit instructions that come out is simply a summation when they both are one, it goes to zero. When one of them is one, it stays at one. That's basically what it comes down to. On the phase modulation, what happens here is, this is kind of like AM modulation on radio frequencies. What we do here is we, we add the signal to the carrier signal, and uh, when the, how am I explain this? Okay, all right. And when the signal is high, then we flip the frequency. When the signal is low, we don't flip the frequency so that the flip of the bit, so to speak, is carried by the carry wave by a frequency change on the carry wave. Now, it's not as simple as this. A simple example of that is when we shift it to 180 degree shift or zero shift, depending upon if it's the bit is high or the bit is low. Well, it's a little bit more complicated like that on GPS, and we'll give you the details of that later. So, to summarize this, what we do is we take the nav and system data and we add that through the modulo 2 signal to the, both the course acquisition code and the P code. The course acquisition code is then mixed in with the carrier signal here and then the P code is mixed in with the carrier signal here. The P code also goes here and is mixed on top of the course acquisition code. So both codes, the course acquisition and the precision code, go out on L1 and only the P code goes out on L2. That's the basic structure of how the data gets out on the GPS satellites and how the receiver receives it. So when the receiver receives both the L1 and the L2 channels, they can then take the signal and through the electronics in the receiver, pull the information back out knowing how the information was put on top of the carrier signal. And that's how it's done.